Welcome ladies and gentlemen, this is Jack Sputnik here and today we are talking about Canon RP and specifically about uh, five tips plus bonus uh, to make the best of your Canon RP and to avoid some of the traps that are there in that camera so that uh, you don't waste your photos or footage. Let's go straight into that. So uh, tip number one is underexpose. And I know it sounds strange, uh, usually it's about proper exposure. However, if you, like me, like um, to travel to some uh, warm countries or if you live in one of the, those countries like I do in southern Portugal, you have a lot of light, uh, then Canon RP is not the best camera for dynamic range out there. So specifically when taking photos like of your family or if you're just into portrait photography and you want to avoid some burnouts uh, in like forehead, like me, I have very high forehead, right? <laughs> so if you want to avoid burnouts here or burnouts in buildings, in architecture, it's better to underexpose since this camera have this tendency to just burn out very quickly all the, you know, highlights in the picture and then it's very difficult to get it back even if you should roll and even if you use like heavy post-processing it will be difficult to get it back and basically under exposure is the way to avoid that kind of pitfall. Pie number two is uh, use low ISO and this is a little bit connected with, with uh, point number one so um, if you shoot um, with, this, uh, with this camera you know, you probably know that the sensor is not the newest and the best on the market, but of course the price is great, but it's not bad. It doesn't mean it's a bad sensor. However, if you drag shadows, uh, uh, you know, a slider in Lightroom, Camera Raw or whatever software you're using up, you may see a lot of grain if you raised your ISO too high. So basically low ISO, a little bit of underexposure will um, make your pictures uh, good to uh, post-process. So obviously there are situations where you cannot avoid, you know, like a high ISO and maybe you don't care about noise. But if you like me do a lot of stock photography, I would recommend to keep it as low as possible. And it, this is generally the rule for most of the cameras. Uh, however, uh, RP have this tendency to be unforgiving in this, in this matter. So be mindful of your ISO and keep it as low as possible for situation you are shooting in. Uh, then AF performance. So uh, a lot of you guys know that uh, um, RP for its price does have pretty good dual pixel autofocus system. However, in many cases it cannot be trusted. Sometimes face and eye detection is getting crazy after a while and basically when you do some street photography like I love to you know like visit some cities like Porto in Portugal which I absolutely love and you know you know hang hang around the streets like you know explore the streets and and take some street photography shots then this like automatic uh, like zone out of like wide zone uh, out of focus uh, have tendency to be like basically stupid <laughs> it's not intuitive enough in my opinion so sometimes uh, like you have a beautiful picture of a person uh, like you know getting this ray of light on the street and and instead of focusing on the person and detecting that there's something interesting there autofocus tends to focus on i don't know like laundry uh just getting dry uh somewhere in front of you or some 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 you know a sign like restaurant or something like that so it's not very intuitive so my recommendation and this tip is to uh, use touch autofocus in this kind of situation so you have this flippy out screen and you can touch to or uh, to use you know focus exactly where you want it to be and this will make you safer this will make your pictures sharp and you will have your focus where you want it to have obviously you can use like you know face and eye detection for vlogging and all kind all kind of stuff and it can be trusted however if you can avoid it and you can use manual not manual but you know autofocus touch on the touch screen this is recommended in case of RP. Another thing is battery life. So battery life in RP is, well, it's not great. Uh, it received this small, uh, you know, uh, this small battery and it really tends to die pretty quick. So if you want to shoot with RP and if you want to have it as your main camera or even as your second camera, it's always good to have two, one or two preferably extra, you know, 
uh, batteries and I would invest in like this multiple battery charger that you can find on the internet. It's not expensive and it's a definitely great investment if you own Canon RP or if you plan to own uh, this camera uh, pretty soon. And tip number five is image stabilization. It, this camera does have only electronic image stabilization and I would basically discourage you to use it because if you use in-camera digital image stabilization and something goes wrong like you can see here uh, like the, the picture is like really I don't know jerky and shaky and you know like jello effect and all this kind of stuff then you are basically done you cannot do too much with that clip because the image stabilization is already there, is amped in the video and done. So it's better to turn your digital image stabilization off and there's a lot of free software even like DaVinci Resolve is free for example and it does have uh, image stabilization that you can do in post-production and this works way better and you can you know adjust uh, this you know parameters there according to the taste and according to the shot so it looks way way better and finally uh, extra tip tip number six this is for vloggers specifically so if you're vlogging you have to be aware or if you're planning to vlog with this camera you have to be aware of huge crop factor in 4k so basically if you don't have a very wide angle lens it might be difficult to frame your face and show some of the surroundings around you so I would recommend to vlog in 1080p and it maybe sounds a little bit backwards or something or old school but really 1080p quality for YouTube and for vlogging is really good and on this camera you can you can definitely uh, use it without any problem with no shame and you will get way more visibility of you know your surrounding and it doesn't crop your video recordings that much okay guys i hope you liked it i hope you enjoyed it if you have more tips for other users on jack sputnik channel on jack sputnik channel please don't forget to leave comments please don't forget to leave thumbs up subscribe and i see you guys in the next one